Hello everybody, it's Lazel here. Today I'm not on my main castle because today I want to talk about all the different artifact skills and so it is way easier for me when I do it from one of my farms because here I have them all here and we can easily look at them. So I would say let's get right into it. But I quickly have to add that I am not 100% sure about all of these skills. I have seen a few in action and I think to understand how the wording makes these skills work. But just wanted to say I haven't seen all of them in action, not 100% sure. Okay, so let's get started with the first golden item and it is the golden armor. The golden armor is the artifact that has been used by every cavalry frontline player in this game um, because every stat on it is very, very beneficial for cavalry players. And yeah, I think that this one was a very big disappointment for a lot of players. They have been excited for those artifact skills and then they get this thing reduces the damage of troops that attack your castle by five percent so this is kind of like a passive skill so it is always active but it is bound to the thing that you have to be defending and it is like a damage taken reduced when defending just in a passive wording and i think that this one is a very big disappointment for all those players they have been very excited about a strong golden armor that makes this artifact even more powerful but then with this skill i personally wouldn't invest 2000 star source into it just because the skill just binds you to being a defender and most cavalry players uh, prefer to be attacking Okay, up to the next skill. Okay, so the Angel Sword already looks a bit better. It is also a passive skill, but it binds you to playing certain events. The wording of the skill is increases attack, defense and HP in Realm Invasion and Elite War by 20%. And 20% is really a lot. This item says, okay, it doesn't matter if you're defending or attacking, it just binds you to be in those related events. I personally never was a big fan of the Angel Sword because of the fact that it increases the attack of all kinds of units. And in my opinion, you should focus like two units in your castle. And so that would make like two stars in this artifact uh, completely useless in my opinion. But now with this skill, I personally see um, a few castles building this artifact when they wanna when when their focus is really those events because then this artifact is just great for you. A lot of big battle power players have a lot of different troops. They have cavalry, they have infantry, archers, and mages mixed in their backline. And I know a few that really provoke to get hit in things like Realm Invasion, for example, they port close to the enemy hive and just wait to be attacked because they have built defensive castles. And with this artifact, all of their units that are defending get an additional boost of 20% on all their base stats and they get all of the attack boost from the artifact itself. The HP boost as basic stat is also a nice thing. So if you want to play Elite War or Realm Invasion with a big focus, then this is now the artifact to go and to unlock this skill because increased all base stats by 20% is just big. It is really, really good in my opinion. Okay, so up to the next artifact. Now we have arrived at a Mjolnir's artifact and yeah, I have been building this artifact too because I like all of the stats on it except the infantry attack on second star. But now with this skill, I don't like the artifact that much anymore. Why? This is the first skill that has to be activated. So when you are playing an event or when you're, for example, in Civil War or in Void, you can go into your Lord skill window and already down here you can, you can see the Thor's Viger 
and by that it says select a castle to make its defense troop increase damage taken by 6% for 12 hours. The effect can't be stacked. So if you want to use this artifact, for example, if you want to stack a big target with your lines, definitely make sure to talk about who has this skill currently available so you don't use it multiple times. And it is like an additional damage increased when attacking. So it kind of like is a debuff for the castle that you select the skill on, but it is on the other hand a buff for you. I see it as a damage increased against target X. Oh, okay, have a skill. Yeah, so I personally don't really like the skill because there are a lot of passive skills in all of the artifacts and that Mjolnir is an active artifact skill isn't the preferred one for me. I'm a big fan of passive stuff. So um, using this one, I personally just see myself using this once a month if I unlock it. So I go into the void, I see a good target and then I say, okay, I quickly use this skill to attack this one specific castle. And then you're still not guaranteed to have full use of it. For example, if you find a target, you use the skill on it and you send your army out and that castle immediately bubbles all the alliance uses the, the shield all skill. And by that is, has the time to alert the player that you wanted to attack. Um, which has no bubble yeah then it might happen that you completely waste the skills so i personally wouldn't invest into this one because i think that there's a better version of the skill and yeah as i just explained for the named reasons i don't think that it is worth unlocking the skill for 2000 star power and yeah so i would say let's go to the next skill and now we come to my all-time favorite. This thing, the Kellet Witch, is just massive. What they did here is, yeah, it is very, very strong. So the Kellet Witch is an artifact that it has been used by cavalry players, but the biggest focus of cavalry players was always the golden armor. And now I see a lot of players changing to this artifact because of its skill. So let's read it. Lightning Ball. It says, when attacking lords, cast three sets of lightning bolts towards the enemy's position. Damage is the number of your surviving troops at the time of the skill trigger times, uh, tw uh, times 21 and has a 20% chance of making the target's attack stop for two seconds. And you have a cooldown of 10 seconds. So how does this skill work? Here's the interesting thing. When you hit a target, the battle usually breaks out and this battle outbreak costs three seconds. So then the timer starts for the lightning ball skill. Then the first cooldown triggers and you have no skill used at the battle outbreak after three seconds. Then you add another 10 seconds to that and that means that at 13 seconds in battle, this skill triggers for the first time. The interesting thing about it is it is an artifact that is mostly used by cavalry players which have in their Mystic College, okay, I don't have the Mystic College on my farm, that's very bad, um, that have the second Mystic College skill, the, sk the stun skill, that makes your cavalry having a chance to stun the um, target unit. And the lightning ball is kind of the same just for multiple targets. So when your, for example, your light, one of your lightning bolts, uh, balls hits a target and it deals a certain amount of damage, not much, but it can trigger to make the unit stop attacking for two seconds, which is like equal to one up to two attacks. And this is a massive damage loss for the target. What I like most about the skill is the wording when attacking lords. I have often seen this skill being used against me when I was defending in the star runes. So this skill is always active, it just binds you to being attacking. I think that the Kellet Witch became the, one of the strongest skills of all artifacts and I think that just really makes it very very good. Every cavalry player should have an eye on this artifact in my opinion. Okay, 
up to the next one. And now we come to the Leviathan skill. I think that this skill isn't very interesting for most of us because the Leviathan artifact can only be bought. You cannot even exchange orange fragments that you have gathered from events or somewhere else to exchange them for them. They don't allow that, so the Leviathan can only be bought, but the Leviathan is a very strong artifact and I will definitely feature the skill, but probably for most of us it won't be interesting. So the skill is called Rescue and it says for one hour after using the skill, 9% of killed troops will automatically be converted to wounded until hospital is full in attack battles. So this is like when we check your pet out you have the option to go for this wounded conversion skill and increases the ratio of killed soldiers converted to wounded at battle end by 0.8%. And this is actually what the Leviathan skill does. So you get a better wounded conversion for one hour after using the skill. I personally think that this skill, yes, it is pretty good because you can just go completely rogue in one hour and don't have to think about that much about your losses. But what shouldn't be forgotten is that this skill doesn't improve your military te technology that you need or that you actually want to improve with artifact skills. And so this only changes the amount of troops that you are losing. It doesn't really help you out with having better troops. You will just end up having more troops. So, but the Leviathan is a very strong artifact and kind of like I think that that compensates that the skill doesn't really help you with your military technology that does the artifact from itself and so I think it is a very interesting skill especially for players that don't have much time for example during Void War then they can just say okay I don't have much, ti much time I will buy this artifact activate the skill go completely crazy in the one hour that I have and then I have to leave again, but then they don't have to think about that much if they can risk that many troops for a special target or something like that. So I think it is an interesting skill. I personally don't really like it because it doesn't improve my military technology, but in the end it is, it is okay, I think, especially for players that, as I just said, don't have that much time in Void War. But yeah, so I would say let's go with the next one. Okay, so now we come to the skill that will be most accessible for the most of us because the Excalibur is the artifact that everybody of us is passively working on by just playing the Monster Swarm. And I think that the Excalibur is the better version of the Mjolnir skill. I mean, there are arguments for both of those skills, but let's get into it. So the skill is called Weak Break and Select a castle to make its defense troops reduce damage dealt by 6% for 12 hours. The effect can't be stacked. So this skill is very good in my opinion, but it is also um, one of those skills that has to be activated. So as I just explained for the Mjolnir, there are different downsides to activative skills that ha you have to select a target for. But I think that this is just a better version of the Mjolnir skill because especially when you're with your alliance and you want to go for a really big stack, then increasing or decreasing the damage that the target units deal to you is better than dealing additional damage against those. But yeah, there are arguments for both sides. For me as a solo player, I think it is very interesting to have damage taken reduced when attacking then uh, damage increased when attacking because for example if you're a solo player and you want to for example zero a castle with like a million troops what would be more interesting for you to take less damage by 1 million units or with your for example 250k units deal more damage against 1 million units there are arguments for both sides i personally prefer to take less damage from 1 million units because when we look into the enhancements you have, you have two damage increased when attacking enhancements but only one damage taken reduced when attacking enhancement 
So I think that if I would have to unlock and decide between the Mjolnir and the Excalibur skill, I would prefer the Excalibur skill. But now we are getting way very personal here with those. But as I just explained in the Mjolnir skill, you search for a target, then you choose the skill here in your Lord skills. Here it is and select target. And by that the target gets a, a debuff, how we call it. And then you can hit it and you will take less damage from the defending troops. Okay, so now we come to the next one. Let's go. So now we come to Apollo's bow and this skill is just massive in my opinion. It is called Brute Force. My Lord's troops have a 7% chance of a power strike, dealing 1.5 times damage. The very strong thing about this is that I understand the wording like that, that it is always active. It doesn't matter if you are defending, if you are attacking, it is always active. It doesn't matter in which event. And it is a trigger or a percentage for every of your units. You have nine units in your castle and this 7% chance triggers for every unit. Dealing 1 point times, uh, 1.5 times damage is also very strong in my opinion. You can kind of like com uh, compare it with the fatal head skill of mages in your mystic college. I think that the fatal hit of mages deals a certain or a higher factor than 1.5 but this is also very strong because it triggers or there is a chance to trigger on every attack so there's no cooldown window or anything i think that this makes the apollo's bow artifact also very strong many players in my opinion have never really looked into apollo's bow because of the fourth and fifth star um, I can just speak for me. Those stars are very unattractive for me. Why is that so? I think that you have to decide for infantry or cavalry as a frontline unit and from the stats that I first see on the um, second, third star and the base star, I would prefer Apollo's bow for an archer focus player. And archers are very very good combined with cavalry. So, but then on the fourth star, I see infantry attack. And this is like a very big step down for me because the fourth star is very hard to reach when you're playing on a small budget or no budget at all. And when you then unlock infantry HP, I think that this is a really a game changing thing about this artifact. If you have a certain budget, then Apollo's bow is very, very interesting in my opinion because of this skill. I personally see this skill especially for players that like to join stacks or big group attacks because in big group attacks it is way easier to send a four unit backline for example of both archer types and both mages types and so you bring way more trigger chances for the brute force because when you're playing solo you mostly want to send like just one or two units in your backline and this decreases the chance of triggering the brute force and kind of like makes the artifact not that attractive anymore for me. If you can send a four unit backline then the chances of triggering the brute force is way higher than just sending a two unit backline. Of course this triggers for every unit type but we want to have our biggest damage source units to trigger with this ability. So I think that this artifact can be very interesting, especially for players that also combine it with the angel sword and the scenario that I just described. If you really want to focus on playing rim invasion where you want to get hit. And if you then have the angel sword with the additional passive buff and the brute force, this can really be powerful, but now we come to specific designs of artifact combinations. This skill is just crazy because it triggers in every city or it can trigger in every situation and dealing 1.5 times damage is really, really good in my opinion. And yeah, so we come to the next artifact. Okay, now we've arrived at the Bryonach skill. So first of all, the Bryonach is an artifact that is kind of like made for cavalry and mage players. 
And when we look into the skill, it says when attacking lords, use the magic piercing gunslinger to, to attack six enemy targets. Damage is the number of your surviving troops times 12 and you have a cooldown of 12 seconds. As I just explained with the Kellet Witch, how the cooldown trigger works, you have the breakout window in uh, when, the, when the battle starts of 3 seconds. So each battle starts at 3 seconds. Then you add your 12 second cooldown. So Bryonic would trigger the first time at 15 seconds in battle. Already then the Bryonic skill has lost a lot of power because in the first few seconds a, f a lot of units die and the damage is equal to your surviving troops at the trigger moment. So let's say for example you attack with a march of 300k in the first 15 seconds or in the first 12 seconds you lose 100k units and then the first trigger goes off so it just multiplies your remaining 200k units times 12. And I think that you shouldn't look into the damage aspect here. What I think is very interesting about the Bryonic skill is the uh, six targets. When you are, for example, in the Star Runes, you often see the scenario that people bring army formations where they send one unit of everything. And you sometimes have then the situation that your main damage unit, let's say, for example, your archers attack or spend one full attack to just hit one cavalry, for example. So, and during this time, while your archers are clearing out all of these small unit pools, the main damage unit of the opponent is hitting your main damage unit, for example, your archers. So, and when then earlier in the battle, the Bryonic skill triggers and um, kills all of these small unit pools, then you don't, um, I mean, you win a lot of um, yeah, better performance that you cannot see at that moment. You know, okay, I have just killed all of these one small units. There might have been the chance that my archers spend time on killing all of these one units before they attack the enemy main damage unit. So I think this is, that this is a good thing about the Bryonic skill. In the end, I am not that big of a fan because the damage calculation isn't really interesting because it is just bound to the amount of surviving troops. And if you improve these skills, I am sure that only the factor times 12 will go up. So yeah, the only good thing about the Bryonic skill is the six different targets. And because of that, it can be a nice thing to unlock, but when you're uh, playing this artifact, I believe that you have an eye on playing cavalry in my opinion and then you should prefer to unlock the Kellet Witch first when you use that artifact before you unlock the Bryonic skill. Okay, let's go to the next skill. Okay, the Holy Robe. I am definitely not sure about this, but if I read this correctly, this thing is just crazy. There is no wording that you have to activate this skill. I also don't see the skill in here. So I understand the skill that it is always active and that would be crazy because the wording says recover 8% of wounded instantly after every battle is over. So you have the conversion of troops that would die into wounded and then you add another factor or another conversion from wounded units to surviving units. If you combine this, for example, with the rescue skill of the Leviathan, this can be a very interesting com uh, combination that I really like to research, but I don't have these artifacts and I won't focus them, but I'm really interested to see how this works. Recover 8% of wounded instantly after every battle is over. It says, Troops that would usually be wounded would just be surviving troops in your battle reports. Very interesting, very powerful also on this artifact because Holy Robe is an artifact that is used from many players that do very big attacks with their main focus being angels. So really interested how this is going to turn out. Okay, let's go to the next skill. 
Okay, so now we come to the Heavenly Spear and this skill says when attacking Lords, use Joanne's Spear to strike the enemy's unit with the most troops. Damage is the number of your surviving troops times 40 and you have a cooldown of 8 seconds. The cooldown explanation as always you have a battle outbreak window of 3 seconds, the battle starts at 3 seconds, then you add your cooldown of 8 seconds, so at 11 seconds the first trigger should happen. I think that this is a worse version of the Bryonic skill because the Bryonic skill has different or several targets, six enemy targets, and by that, as I just explained in my Bryonic feedback, the um, chance of killing small unit pools is very high, and this can have a yeah, not seen increasement of your battle performance. The Heavenly Spear. On the other side just focuses the biggest, the biggest unit pool. For example, we have 105k of tier 12 mages and 100k of tier 12 angels. Then the battle power pool of the angels would be way higher than of your tier 12 mages. But the skill says it targets the, uh, the pool with the most units, so the skill would go into 100 5k of tier 12 mages instead of 100k tier 12 angels. Uh, check again the battle power amounts of the different units. I sadly have no guardian temple here on my farm, otherwise I would show it. But I think that the heavenly spear skill isn't very interesting in my opinion because after 11 seconds or after 10 seconds in battle already a few units have died. And that has an impact on the damage and the damage is just related to your surviving troops times 40 and by that i would prefer to have for example the bryonic skill unlocked which has the impact of killing small unit pools uh, on trigger so my main units don't miss out on a hit by clearing those small unit pools okay let's go to the next one Okay, so now we come to the Emperor Sword and the Exterminate skill is just like an additional slaughter skill. During your first solo attack after using the skill, killing 5% of wounded enemies in this battle takes effect when attacking castles or resource mines. So when we compare that with the slaughter skill, the slaughter skill says during your first solo attack after activating this skill, an additional 10% of the target's wounded troops will be killed. So this is like an additional slaughter skill, just half as good as the original. I personally wouldn't invest 2k of star power to unlock this skill. Okay, let's go with the next one. Okay, so now we come to Athena's Aegis and this thing is just crazy in my opinion. So within one hour after you use the skill, your melee troops get a shield at the start of the battle, absorbing troops HP times 15% damage. Shield lasts for 10 seconds. So there has been or there have been already a few videos about this skill, and this is just crazy for infantry players. The whole artifact is built for infantry players and when you then combine one of the units, I mean infantry have the highest HP pool from units in your barracks, then this thing is just crazy. You get an additional health pool for your infantry and the good thing about this, in the first 10 seconds of the battle, if the shield lasts long enough for sure, then you won't lose any units. There's so much damage dealt in the first few seconds of a battle that when you can absorb that and in that time window while the shield is still active, reduce the opponent's unit pool um, with your units, with your mages, with your archers or with your angels, then this will have a huge impact on the whole uh, battle performance. This is a skill that I think is very interesting. Still, I believe that it won't have that much use. I don't know about all of the cooldown times of all these activated skills. I believe that they are 24 hours. But yeah, if you use the skill, for example, in Void, you can combine it with other activated skills, for example, from the Leviathan, then you really have to, or then you can have this playstyle of I go crazy within one hour and then I can rest for the uh, for the rest of the day. And but still, the 
Atena's Aegis artifact is an artifact that is used by a lot of infantry focused players. So unlocking the skill ain't a bad thing. I personally have the problem with it that it has to be activated. I'm a big fan of passive skills, but this activated skill is really good in my opinion. There are skills like from the Excalibur or from the Mjolnir that just bind you to one target castle. But this thing is a buff for you. You're, um, and it doesn't say that you have to be attacking or that you have to be defending. So you can use this in a lot of different situations. And I think that this is probably the best activated skill from all artifacts. Okay, let's go with the next one. Okay, I just saw that we have the Eye of Horus and the Cup of Yamshid left. So Eye of Horus, nothing interesting in here. Increases the rally troops limit, rally troops limit by 20%, I believe barely nobody of you guys invests into this artifact i see people doing it for the second star damage increased when defending for certain defense events but i don't know i personally would also see the few artifact exp that i spent on getting the second star as wasted so i personally don't use the eye of horrors i don't think that it is a good artifact and the artifact skill increases the rally troops limit by 20%. So nothing interesting in here, in my opinion. And then we come to the last artifact, the Cup of Yamshid, and increases the wounded limit in hospital by 20%. With all in the whole picture of this artifact, I just don't see anybody unlocking the skill. And yeah, this is actually it. I hope that my little explanations of all different artifact skills help you out to make your decision what artifact skill you want to work on if, or if you want to change your priorities in your artifact management. And yeah, if you still have any questions left, let's talk about it in the comment section. If I explained something wrong, also let me know down there so we can learn from each other. Yeah, and then I would say see you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.